Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss roles and access controls. Roles in ServiceNow are used to grant permissions to groups which contain users. For example, here we have an administrator group in ServiceNow with the admin role. If the organization hires a new ServiceNow administrator, all they need to do is add the new user to the administrator group and the new hire will automatically inherit all roles that are a part of the group. This shows one of the benefits to assigning roles to groups rather than specific users. A role is a record in the sys user role table. Roles are typically assigned to groups which contain the users. A group may contain one or more roles. Roles are a part of one or more access control rules, which are used to define specific access. There are many out-of-the-box roles, such as admin, which provides special access to all system features, security admin, which provides access to high security settings and access controls, the ITIL role, which is an out-of-the-box technician role that can create and update records on a number of tables. The ITIL admin role, which may delete records. And a number of other administrative roles. Access controls are what define the actual permissions in the system. An access control rule is a record in the SIS security ACL table. These rules grant access to certain parts of the system. When creating an access control rule, you must specify the object, such as a record, an operation, such as create, read, write, or delete, and finally the required permissions, which will be a role a set of roles, and or any additional conditions. The first image is a screenshot of the access control rule. This image shows the object, which is a record, and the operation, which is right. It then specifies the incident table and the star wildcard as the field which signifies all fields on the incident table. In the second screenshot, we see the permissions required for this access control rule, which is the ITIL rule. So from the two screenshots, we can gather that a user must have the ITIL role in order to write or update all fields on the incident table. The star wildcard may be used in the table and or field selections, which would signify all tables and or all fields. There are thousands of out-of-the-box access control rules, which are mapped to the out-of-the-box rules. So if we take a look at the overview slide again, we see that the right access control rule is assigned to the ITIL rule and the delete access control rule is assigned to the admin role. The roles ITIL and admin are then assigned to the network group, which contains three users. The main access operations are the following. Executed, which grants access to run an app or script. Create, which grants access to insert records in a table. Read, which grants access to view records. Write, which grants access to update records. Delete, which grants access to delete records. List edit, which grants access to update records from a list view and report on, which grants access to create reports on a specific table. 
Now let's walk through the access control flowchart. It starts with a user making a request to view or edit a record. The first question is, do access controls for the matched object exist? If no, the user is granted access to the record. If the answer is yes, then a second question is asked. Does the user have one of the required roles within the rule? If no, it denies the user access to the record. If yes, it asks a third and final question, do the conditions evaluate to true? If the conditions pass, it grants access to the object or record. If the conditions fail, it denies the user access to the record. Now let's take a look at roles and access controls in ServiceNow. Since we will be looking at access control rules, let's start by activating the security admin role. Now let's navigate to the user administration application. We'll click on the roles module where we are taken to a list of all roles within the system. Let's go into the admin role. Role names follow a naming convention of all lowercase characters with underscores instead of spaces. We can see the nice description that explains the role. At the bottom of the form, we have three related lists. It shows any inherited roles, applications with this role, and modules with this role. Now let's navigate to the ITIL role. Here we can see that the ITIL role inherits two roles. If a user is assigned the ITIL role, they will automatically inherit the view changer and template editor roles defined here. Inherited roles can be very nice when maintaining complex rules that require other roles. Now let's take a look at access controls. In the system security application, we can click the access control module to be taken to a list view of all access control rules in the system. Here we see a number of fields such as the name, the operation, the type, if the rule is active, and the updated by and updated fields. Let's go into the incident.short description create access control rule. Here we see a number of fields. The operation is create, which means this rule allows the defined user to create new records. The name field contains the table and field in question. Here we have a table of incident with the field of short description. If we wanted to, we could specify the star wildcard in either the table, field, or both, which would grant access to all tables or all fields of a specific table. If the admin override field is checked, then this rule is ignored by admins. Now, under the definition section, we see no rules. This means that any user, even those who do not have any roles, can fill in the short description field when creating an incident. Now we'll go into the incident delete access control rule. We have an operation of delete, a table name of incident, and the field of none. Now, under the definition section, we have a role of ITIL admin. This means that only users who have the ITIL admin role may delete incident records. 
Finally, we'll go into the incident.incident state write access control rule. Here we see the definition contains the ITIL admin role, which means any user who has the ITIL admin role may write or update the incident state field on the incident table. Now let's walk through an example. Let's say we'd like to create a new group which contains the role problem underscore example. This role allows users to create and read a problem record, but will not let them update or delete the record. To start, we'll go into the roles module in the user administration application. We'll click new and add a name of problem underscore example and click submit. Now we'll go into the groups module and click new. We'll provide a name of problem example and add the problem underscore example role to this group. Now we'll go to the group members tab and add businessman Bob to this group. Note that this is the only group businessman Bob is a part of which means he has no other roles besides this problem underscore example role. Now we'll create the access controls. We'll navigate to the access controls module under the system security application and click new. We'll provide the create operation, a table of problem and a star representing all fields. We'll provide our role in the definition and click Submit. We'll also create a read access control rule for all fields on the problem table and add our role once more. Before we test our controls, we need to do one more thing. Since the problem application is only visible to users with the ITIL role out of box, we need to add our newly created role to the problem application's role. If we type in problem, right click the application and click edit application menu, we'll be taken to the application record where we can add our role. Now, if a user has either the ITIL role or the problem example role, they will see this application. Now we're ready to impersonate Businessman Bob. We can see the problem application here. We'll click on New, and here we see that we can create a new problem. And if we go back and navigate into an existing record, we can read the fields. It's important to note that there are out-of-the-box access controls which allow users without roles to modify a few fields on this problem record, which is why we see that we can edit or write to these fields. Again, there are a number of out-of-the-box access controls, so it's important to keep these in mind when playing around with access control rules. Now that we've seen how roles and access controls work in ServiceNow, I'd like to end this video by discussing the access control execution order. Here we can see the execution flowchart. Every time a user requests access to an object, the system performs the logic displayed here. The system first looks for field access control rules and starts with rules which define a specific table and field name shown in box one. If no rules are found, 
it proceeds to the second box where it will search for rules that match the parent table and field name. It will continue these operations until it finishes with six. If a rule is found, it evaluates the rule and determines if it should grant or deny access to the object. Once the system makes it through the field rules, it proceeds to the table access control rules, where it starts by searching for rules defined on the table and proceeds through step two and three. If the system makes it through the table rules without finding a rule, it will grant access to the requested object. Access controls can be tricky to learn and they can take a while to gain a solid understanding of them so don't be worried if this video didn't make complete sense. I'd recommend re-watching this video, reading the ServiceNow documentation, and playing around with access control rules in a personal instance.